Hey guys, I've got an interesting verse for you, Psalm 119, and it says in verse 85, the arrogant have dug pits for me. <laughs> Men who are not in accord with your law, the arrogant have dug pits for me. Men who are not in accord with your law. This guy is saying, life's not fair. There are some weird behaviors out there. And, you know, I think about the story of Daniel in chapter 6, and you should read it. It's famous about the lion's den. Well, right before that, the king's officials and commissioners developed such jealousy toward Daniel that they, they created uh, and consulted together to enforce an injunction to get Daniel in trouble for the technicality of praying to his God. He got in trouble and got thrown in the lion's den. These arrogant men dug pits for him uh, to try to get rid of him. But actually, God saved him, and they got thrown in the pit, and they got chewed up before they hit the ground. And um, that's interesting that, you know, God will take care of your stuff if you let him. And it says... The, all, the arrogant have dug pits for me, men who are not in accord with your law. This even happened to Joseph. They threw him in a pit. Read about Joseph in Genesis, the latter chapters of Genesis. He had a dream, and God was giving him a destiny. And actually, all God was doing was preparing him to do famine relief for Egypt, which would end up blessing all of that 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 region of Mesopotamia and Egypt and Israel and all the, it would benefit his family. God was pre prepping him for the future and made people around him jealous. And they got weird and they dug, they threw him in a pit. And I think about Psalm 40, verse one, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Aren't you glad for that? He's paying attention. He loves you. Yes, he does. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction and out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. That's a good verse. I've known people who have struggled with uh, workers at work. And I'll not give detail because it, it's private, but I watched God move on people's behalf over and over again. My point of view as a pastor being invited in to some of the dilemmas and challenges over the years that people have asked me to pray for them about and consult with them and share. And, you know, in one case, God vindicated this particular guy and God eradicated and moved all the arrogant out of their lives. It happened for Daniel. They were conspiring. The prefects and all these guys ended up just being a bunch of arrogant people with an evil agenda. And God spared Daniel. I saw one of these uh, depictions, a film recently, a series, and uh, my favorite, I didn't watch all of it, but I saw the Daniel scene. And... The cinematographer, and I guess along with the director, did a camera shot that was like lion's eye level toward Daniel and showed this, you know, this moment in the pit. And it was, it was compelling. It was powerful. It was like, whoa, I, I kind of held my breath. It was like cine cinematography at its best. And it showed Daniel over there, you know, like being stared down upon by the apex predator of the jungle, you know. And yet God shut the mouths of the lions, sent angels to shut their mouths. And God turned things around. And man, how many times has God redeemed our lives from the pit? He is good at doing this. I think about Jonah in the pit of the belly of the fish. That's a pit. He got in there... A in that case, if he were here to admit it, he got in there by his own bad choices. It was self-inflicted misery in that case. Daniel, no, it was persecution. 
Um, Joseph, he just, it wasn't fair, but God turned it around. God turned it around. And I pray whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, um, that God executes judgment and deals with things for you, sorts things out. In fact, let's just leave room for the wrath of God. Let's trust him. God, I pray whatever people are facing right now, in the neighborhood, at work, in their own household, whatever situation they're dealing with, I'm asking you to redeem their lives from the pit. I am asking you, God, to rescue and redeem and deliver. Whatever that bad diagnosis is, we, we trust you, Jesus, for your healing power to flow into that situation and reverse that situation. Your liver damage, even if it's from too much sugar, alcohol from the past, what, whatever, too much Tylenol, whatever it was, whatever it is. Mercy. I'm asking you for mercy, Lord. God, those of us who have been hurt and gotten bitter, God, please forgive us. Help us not to get bitter. Anybody dealing with depression, I pray they get out of depression, get out of the pit of depression, and get. they don't want to be manic, so they don't want to go one extreme to the other. I get that. So I'm just asking you to bring a leveling to people. Bring joy to people. Bring strength to people, Lord, because you redeem our lives from the pit and you put a new song in our hearts, a song of praise to our God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for seeing us through, for taking, taking us into a new level, for preventing what the enemy has attempted to uh, impose, reversing it, turning things around, restoring and healing and redeeming. In Jesus' name, amen.